Hello, my name is Sarah Morrisby and I'm the Director of Philanthropy here at the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. Today I'm really happy to welcome Dr Di Stowe, one of our newest chair patrons, to join our team. You may have heard about chair patrons when you come to our concerts and see them listed in our concert programs, or you may have heard about them through other orchestras. Chair patrons are a way that our major donors can really connect with our musicians and form some really beautiful relationships. So we thought we'd get Di in to talk about why she decided to become a chair patron. So Di, why did you decide to become a chair patron? Great question. And Sarah, it's lovely to see you today. It's really nice to be here. Last year, I was a corporate partner, and that was a really rich experience. And I got to know a whole lot about the TSO that I didn't know before through that program. And it just came up in conversation, um, the opportunity to be a chair patron. And I explored that a little bit in the sense of the opportunity to follow a particular musician and support that person seemed to be just giving that little bit extra or being able to be engaged in a little bit different way. I chatted with lovely Kath and she wondered if I might meet up with Anna Larson Roach and I did, and Anna is now my person. And why Anna? Anna's a viol player, she's tutti viola, and she plays so beautifully. She just adds value adds to the TSO. The TSO are fabulous. Anna just really value adds special sound, special music, and She's so energised and engaged in her music that I thought, wow, that's the person for me. I'd really want to um, support her. Yeah. Absolutely. And I guess another thing I've thought about too is contributing to the TSO broadly with a focus on Anna and also my own engagement with the TSO, a little bit richer and a little bit more focused in the sense of the marvellous TSO, fabulous on the world stage. Absolutely, because one thing that we always really like to try and do with our chair patrons is ensure that there's a great match between musician and patron. One, it makes my job an awful lot easier when, when, the, two, when the two get along and it just means that you do get to kind of forge a much more natural and organic friendship rather than something that seems a bit like a business transaction. Well, it's just lovely so far getting to know Anna um, as her chair patron and just getting to know um, what it is for her to be a successful viola player uh, in the TSO and also her quest for excellence, yes. just to get to know that side of things for her. Very special. Certainly. And I think that you've touched on something there as well where with that directed giving towards the chair patronage, it does mean that you get to have more of those kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations and understand really the musician behind the music mm. and what has driven them to become a professional, what keeps on driving them to strive for, for further excellence. Mm. And I think that can be such a special connection to have with someone, especially when you're an expert in your field, to talk to someone who's an expert in their field and they're very different fields. Yes, It's yes. quite an interesting conversation every time. Mm. Yeah, that, that's um, so true. Anna and I have met maybe two or three times now and each time we just build on our conversation. We don't always talk about music. I love music, so I'm really keen to talk about music, but uh, just getting to know her in other ways um, in supporting her career. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you said that you love music. Is there a certain type of music that you love to listen to? Is classical music your go-to or you're a bit of a mix? I'm a bit of a mix. Certainly. Um, I'm just thinking about uh, Anna. The last time I heard her play was Tchaikovsky for Friday Night Live. Yes. Beautiful, sublime, wonderful. I love music. I have music going around me all the time. I have music in the car. I have music at home. Um, I dance and sing at home. Beautiful, yep. I, I'm really eclectic and with my association with TSO in the recent year, I've just really enjoyed, oh, last year, um, Wagner's Ring Cycle mm -hmm. and um, Nina Stem yes. and the collaboration that the TSO has done with Monique Bromby. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. 
Yeah. And, and it's something that we'll be performing with 10 days in March. So yes. we're really looking forward to to seeing how that collaboration comes together and how the public... Very exciting. Yeah, it's a really exciting one there. Yeah. The Mozart, the clarinet concert that's coming up. And um, Vivoli, I love Vivoli. Yes. I think I've loved... Four Seasons. Four Seasons have been my go-to for years. Fantastic, The yes. familiarity, I can almost hear it as I'm talking about it. There's definitely a little bit of something for everyone in there, so I'm so glad that you're Tuning. finding, finding yeah. something already that you can look <laughs> yeah. forward to. Yeah. And so you're saying that, you, you know, you love music and you always have music around you, mm. and is that what kind of drew you to actually look at the TSO in the first place in that corporate partnership role first and now as that chair patron? Is that what kind of drove you towards us here? Uh, yeah, I'm a great fan of the arts. I've always been keen to contribute and it came to me, you know, that maybe I could form a liaison with the TSO and contribute to, to music and that's been enormously satisfying. I really love the notion of giving. It's really great to give. You know, our happiness, our research literature shows that giving, if that's uh, your inclination, can be a real value add in terms of your happiness quotient and community, working in the community. I, I really like um, to do that. And Hobart and the arts, Tasmania and the arts, Tasmania and music, fantastic. I have to absolutely agree with that. I think that we're so lucky to be on this island that's full of incredible creatives. I've just thought of one thing that's happened for me as a direct consequence of being involved with the TSO, now this is going to sound like amusing, I've always wanted to learn to play the piano and I'm going to start keyboard um, and I'm going to start lessons next month. Fantastic. And that would never have happened had it not been for my connection with the TSO in the sense of bringing it closer to the front of my mind and doing something about it. I love that so much. And so just going to start with basic lessons, yeah, yeah, yeah. grow it from there have an idea of what piece you'd mm, love to end up mm, playing. Mm. Is there a particular piece that you'd love to one day? Not yet. No. <laughs> Let it see how it all settles and see yeah. how it all goes. Yeah, that would be too much fun. Oh, mm, how mm, wonderful. Mm. And, it's such a, and it is one of those things that I think we forget is that it's never too late to take up, to take up music, mm. whether that be music appreciation or actually learning an instrument. It really is never too late. Um, and it's always nice when you find that passion and you have the opportunity to pursue it. So that's wonderful. I'm really excited about yeah, that. Same, so, yeah. Oh, fab. I'm really excited about that. That's great. Well, thanks, Di, so much for coming along this afternoon and joining in this conversation. It's really wonderful from my perspective to be able to talk to our donors like this to share a bit of why you get involved and how that kind of makes you feel personally. Mm. And so it's just been an absolute joy. So thank you so much for coming along. Thanks, Sarah. It's been lovely. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us here and watching this video. If you'd like any further information on anything you've heard today, please head along to www.tso.com.au and don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe on our YouTube channel to see more of these videos. Thank you.